This video is going to discuss organism organization. Not how neat you keep your papers, but what's inside of you. And this video is by Katrina Sherbin, or as you might know me, Miss Sherbin. So this video is going to discuss three things. Number one, what is an organism? Number two, the difference between an atomic and cellular theory. Number three, finally we'll get to the organization of organisms. And we are going over one and two because it will help you understand the third concept. Without that background knowledge, the third one doesn't make complete sense. So what is an organism? An organism is a living thing. And how do we know if something's living? It's not as easy as you would, might think. It actually relies on seven characteristics. If it has seven of these characteristics, it is living. So the first characteristic is that it's made up of cells. Number two, um, they obtain and use energy. Number three, things grow and develop. Number four, they reproduce. Number five, they respond to their environment. Number six, they adapt to their environment. And finally, they are organized diff at different levels. And that is what we will discuss today. So organisms can be multicellular, meaning have more than one cell. Multi means many, more than one, and cellular means to do with cells. The words in the definition. So when we think of life, we usually think of multicellular organisms, like animals, or plants, and even fungi. But there are microorganisms, or uni cellular organisms. Uni means one, cellular means to do with cells. And we cannot see these ones because they are microscopic. Um, hence the word microorganism. And one of them is bacteria. We have good bacteria and bad bacteria, um, depending on how you look at it. Amoebas, the smallest animals, the parameciums, and my favorite, the Euglena, and they have a little flagellum on the, for kind of like a tail that helps them move around. So, what makes them living? Again, all of these things, no matter if they're a singular cell or they are as gigantic as an elephant, they have all seven characteristics. If it only has six of these characteristics, it is not living. And you can think of some things that aren't living, like rocks, air, sunlight, water, even fire. But if you think about a rock, it doesn't use obtain energy, um, which would make it a pretty good pet, but it doesn't respond to its environment. It doesn't grow and develop. This is why I prefer my dog Mac for a pet than the pet rock. But there is something that these two things have in common, the pet rock and my pet dog Mac. Now these two pets do have something in common, the pet rock and the pet dog are all made up of atoms. Living and non-living things are made up of atoms. Now you might remember atoms as looking something like this. Now this isn't the best picture or um, the most correct one, but it does for now. So in the center of an atom is a nucleus. It has positively charged protons and neutral neutrons. And orbiting around the nucleus is the negatively charged electrons and these can come and go as they please. And we organize our atoms in the periodic table of elements. We can think of different ways that they react just by what column or row they are in. Now, there is the atomic theory. And atomic theory simply states that all matter or stuff in the entire universe is made up of tiny units called atoms. And these atoms can combine to make molecules, like that water molecule, and now this DNA molecule. And they can even combine to make organelles, like the fats, lipids, carbohydrates, make up all these little organelles that we find in cells. Cell theory states three things. Number one, all life forms are made from cells, like my dog Mac. Or they can be one cell, like the bacteria. 
Number two, all cells arise from pre-existing cells. There's no spontaneous generation. Number three, the cells are the smallest form of life. Now that leads us to organization of human organisms. So we know that we're made up of atoms. Everything in the universe is made up of atoms and that these atoms can be organized in periodic table. And these atoms can combine to make up molecules. So atoms go into molecules and these molecules can make up things like DNA, protein, lipids, carbohydrates, and that when they're all put together, they can make organelles. And organelles are these tiny little structures that are inside of cells that help it function. They cannot live outside the cells. So that brings us to cells. So, so far we have atoms, molecules, organelles, cells. And these cells are, can be a form of life if they're unicellular. And they are the smallest structural and functional units of life. One cell can be a life, but in our case, we have trillions of cells, and some of them are specialized. We have red blood cells, we have neurons, we have muscle cells, bone cells, skin cells, eye cells. And that brings us to our next level of organization, tissues. So now we have atoms, molecules, organelle cells, tissues. And there's a nice little drawing of a muscle tissues, and they are made up of cells that are similar in structure and in function, and they work together to have a specialized function. Um, and when they say they're structure and function, someone that means they look and they do the same thing. And here we go. So we have some nervous tissue. Nervous tissue conducts thoughts, actions, impulses, and they help the brain function. Where connective tissue might keep everything in its place inside your body. Now that brings us to our next level, which is organs. So now we have atoms, molecules, organelles, cells, tissues, organs. Organs are made up of tissues that are similar in their structure and their function. And they work together to do specialized tasks. So some organs that you know of, probably the stomach, which helps you digest this food, lungs, which help you bring in the air, and muscles, which help you contract and move. And without these organs, you wouldn't have an organ system. So now that brings us to atoms, molecules, organelles, cells, tissues, organs, organ systems. There are 11 organ systems in the human body. They are groups of organs that work together to perform a specialized and specific function for the organism. So if you think about it, if one organ system can't do the job of another. For example, the digestive system can't do the same thing a nervous system can. But they have to work together. The nervous system might tell your digestive system that you're full. And this brings us to the last level, which is organisms. So now we have atoms, molecules, organelles, cells, tissues, organs, organ system, organisms. And here is another diagram for your pleasure. So let's do that one more time, ladies and gentlemen. We have atoms, molecules, organelles, cells, tissues, organs, organ systems, organisms. One more time. Atoms, molecules, organelles, cells, tissues, organs, organ system, organism. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope this helped you understand. And now, answer the survey questions that correspond to this video. You know where to find them. They are on the science site. IMCSScience.weebly.com. And if you have any questions, you know where to find me.